Thank you. Also, the Honorable Francis Lay. Thank you, Mary Slay. Today we're very happy to have with us a unique person representing a very unique family who has done great service to the United States of America. So I will allow him to talk more about that. And a flagpole, just so you know, has been donated in remembrance of this family. Michael Tipton, please tell us your interesting story. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Is this working now? Yes. Oh, that's good. That's good. Our government leaders, our VA representatives, our heroic veterans and their supporting families, I salute you. Uh, my name is Mike Tipton. I'm here from Portland, Oregon. But I was born and raised here in St. Louis. The mayor said I could come back at any time. We're not close. I'm here to tell you this morning about a, one of our nation's most patriotic and blessed families. This tale begins in northern Illinois city of Kiwani. In 1884, a young boy named Leo Van Kutren settled with his family from Zeal, Belgium. He was a left-handed shortstop on the town baseball team when he met a local Scotch-Irish lass named Emma McGuire. They married in June of 1904, and they came to the World's Fair for their honeymoon here in St. Louis. Upon their return to Kiwani, they started their family, having four children there, and then eight more in Brookfield, Missouri, where Grandpa got a better job. He was a window trimmer. These nine sons and three daughters were born from 1905 to 1923. They all learned from their parents the importance of God and nation in their lives. They were very blessed. A few of the boys joined the Navy before World War II began. Chief Petty Officer, Uncle Paul, who passed away just this past November, actually sailed into Pearl Harbor about three days after it was bombed. After the war began, the rest began to enlist. By 1943, all 12 were in uniform. Six sons in the Navy, one son in the Army, one in the Marines, one in the Merchant Marines, and all three daughters in the WAX. And during the war, Grandma and Grandpa did their part. They sold millions of dollars in war bonds, touring with Bob Hope, Kate Smith, and the like. They tell about pitching pennies with Bob Hope. He was, he was pretty good at it, they'd say. When Marine Corporal and later St. Louis Policeman James Van Kutren, Uncle Jim, he's buried over there in Section uh, FF. He joined the Marines and became the 12th Van Kutren in uniform. Grandma wrote to President Roosevelt, advising him that her supply was now depleted and that he would have to get recruits elsewhere. <laughs> Roosevelt replied with extreme gratitude. Grandpa died in 73 at the age of 93, and Grandma died 10 years later, nearly reaching her 100th birthday. They were very blessed. 11 of those 12 Van Kutrens served overseas, and maybe it was our greatest family blessing. They all returned safely. The six in the Navy saw considerable action in the Pacific, like Petty Officer Cyril, Uncle Bub, he's over there in Section CC with his wife Dorothy. Sergeant Thomas, Uncle Tommy Van Kutren, with his loving wife Virginia. They're over in Section G. These are burial sections. That's that's where they're located now. Uh, he received a Purple Heart in the Philippines. And, and I have to let you in on a family secret. Really, I think uh, the Van Kutren wives were really the heroes in this family. They, uh, if you knew my uncles, you would know that. They, 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 they were the heroes. Uncle Leo, 
he thought he was a smart one. He was joining the Merchant Marines. He thought he'd make a few extra dollars in the Merchant Marines. But uh, he had no picnic, sleeping in a life jacket, wondering if a torpedo was heading his way. First Sergeant Adine Van Kutren, my mother, served in North Africa and Italy with General Mark Clark's staff. She's buried over in Section Y. She had two veterans in her life. She and my father met at the Legion Post on Olive Street. I'm not sure which Legion Post, but they, they met there many years ago. He was a veteran, served in the Aleutians. He died much too young after coming back. She later was very fortunate. She met Jim Harris, my stepfather, 91 years old. He flew the hump between uh, India and China. He's here with us today. Jim, after he got out of the service, helped NASA launch, launch a spacecraft. He is truly the greatest example of our nation's greatest generation. Our family loves him very much. In 1942, the five Sullivans were lost in the sinking of the USS Juno. Well, I had three uncles that were serving on the USS Lexington then, Vincent, John, and Paul. They were split up. The government said we couldn't do that anymore. They were not happy with that decision. They loved their family every bit as much as their nation. Well, after the war, these 12 siblings started their own families in New York, Washington, Long Beach, Sacramento, Columbia, and here in St. Louis. They produced 26 children that I am proud to call cousins. My family is here from uh, all over the United States, gathering here for next week for the burial of the final serving member of that family. Staff Sergeant Rita Van Kutren Scott and her husband of over 60 years, Sergeant Byron Mickey Scott. Rita served in England and Uncle Mickey also served in the uh, flying the hump from the Himalayas to, uh, to China. So we'll be burying them here next week. And that, that's the end of the end of the generation. Aunt Rita returned to St. Louis, started to work in the airline industry. She met Uncle Mickey, they retired in Longview, Texas, and had a healthy and long retirement. Mickey passed away this last December at age 87, and Rita followed in February, close to her 90th birthday. They did not have children of their own, so all of us cousins and our children are blessed with large doses of their love. Aunt Rita and I had our differences over the years, but she came to me in a dream last night, and she had a simple message for all of us. She said, go Cardinals. <laughs> so that is the tale of a very blessed family that I'm proud to share with you. After next week, we will have five of the 12 buried here at beautiful Jefferson Barracks. Maybe someday, if our blessings continue, we can assemble more or all of the 12 here from their, from their current uh, burial spots. Thank you for allowing me to share this tale. May God continue to bless America and all of our families. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Reverend Jackie Asher, a pastor from Owensville United Methodist Church, will now give our memorial prayer. This is a particular honor for me because my uncle was what the Reverend uh, was John Logan. He's way down the family tree, but it's nice to know that it is continuing for the, the observance of Memorial Day. Let us pray. God of all times and places, all peoples and nations, we come armed forces.